Welcome to the Everything Podcast, Season 2, Episode 116, and we're still looking at Doctor Who Magazine, Issue 597, and uh, the first article we're going to look at is the Doctor Who Magazine 60th Anniversary poll. Uh, so before we get into the article, we're going to go through, uh, so uh, what happened is the first half of 2023, Doctor Who Magazine issued polls for the th- main 13 Doctors. Minus uh, the eighth doctor because he only had one story. Um, so uh, in tenth place we have Science and Library Forest of the Dead, which was broadcast in two thousand eight with a percentage vote of eighteen point seven, followed by so I'm going from ten to one. In ninth place we have Remembrance of the Daleks, which was broadcast on ni- in nineteen ninety eight with a percentage vote of twenty point nine percent. Uh, number eight is City of Death, broadcast in 1979, with a vote of 24.5%. Number seven is Human Nature and the Family of Blood, broadcast in 2007, with a um, vote of 24.9%. Number six is Blink, also broadcast in 2007, with a uh, vote of 25.8%. Number five is the Day of the Doctor, which was broadcast in 2013, which had a which has a um, vote of 25.9%. Uh, number four was the Caves of Androzani, which was broadcast in 1984, with a vote of 26.5%. Number three was Genesis of the Daleks, broadcast in 1975, with a vote of 26.8%. Number two is World Enough in Time and the Doctor Falls, which was broadcast in 2017 with a vote of 28% and number one was Heaven Sent broadcast in 2015 with a vote of 35.1%. So let's read the article. Uh, It's titled Magnificent Heaven. Heaven Sent is officially Doctor Who Magazine readers' favourite story from the show's first 60 years. Tom Spilsbury dials writer Stephen Moffat who confesses all. At the start of 2023, we asked you to vote in our 6th anniversary poll in order to identify the most popular Doctor Who story of them all. All 300 TV adventures up to, and including last year's The Power of the Doctor, were eligible, and thousands of you submitted your votes. This day, we asked you to give you a score out of 10 for each and every story. After calculating the average mark for each adventure, we were then able to present a top 3 for each of the first 13 primary Doctors. With those stories put forward in the into the grand final, for obvious reasons, the eighth Doctor, Paul, Paul McGann, was a slight ex- exception to the rule. So the 1996 TV movie was automatically given a pass. That gave us a short list of 37 stories, from which we asked you to pick your top five ever. Impossible. How could any of you choose just five? But thankfully, you did. And uh, with your votes now tossed up, we can reveal your top ten and. Your overall winner. I'm absolutely astonished and thoroughly delighted, says writer Stephen Moffat. When we break, when we break the news about Heaven Sent's victory, I suppose, if I'm honest, I always thought I'd have a chance to, that I'd had a chance to of you. It would be for Blink all the day. The Doctor see Heaven Sent at the very top of the list and Worlds of Time in second place. Yeah, that's great. I mean, both of them were very late on for me. You, you're supposed to get worse every time. So it's a comfort to know that I still have some good ones in me. Certainly, by the time I wrote those episodes. I was instead of worry about whether there was anything left in the tank. The result may come as a slight surprise, but only because of the curious fact that Wilden, that Wilden enough in time in the Doctor was actually beat Heaven Central in the preliminary stage to vote in, with the two parts uh, crowned as your favourite 12th Doctor story. However, in the final series, with voting starting again from scratch, Heaven Sent 
raced ahead of everything. More than one third of all Doc 2 magazine voters nominated it, helping it to leapfrog World Enough for Time Doc's frozen process. Stephen is keen to give credit uh, to give due credit to everyone involved in the making of Heaven Set. Please make sure you mention the brilliance of executive producer Brian Mitchell and director Richard Lalo. He urges, and of course, the m- mighty Capaldi, this will make him really happy. Heaven Sent is undoubtedly a tour de force for Peter Capaldi, whose almost solitary performance is breathtaking. Trapped inside a confession dial, the Doctor relives the same day over and over again, agonisingly punching through a wall of solid diamond across the course of millions of years. Stephen laughs when asked if there's any subtext going on there. I, I was getting near the end of my time on the show, and my, uh, my every year was identical. Who, uh, who remembers? Every year, I was climb up the mountain and then getting kicked back to the bottom. I mean it in a lovely way. I was still enjoying it, but inevitably, the idea of the same thing again and again and again leaked into the script. I'd say that Heaven Sent could never be called a typical, typical Doctor Who story. If indeed there is such a thing, well, there is such a thing as a typical episode, and most of Doctor Who is made up of those typical episodes. Ventures, Stephen. That doesn't that doesn't mean they're not good. They're generally very imaginative and funny. An awful lot of what Doctor Who is was set up by Dalek creator Termination six years ago. We do follow it quite carefully a lot of the time, but I also think like once a year you're supposed to do something that's completely mental. Certainly during the Capaldi years, I was always looking to one per series and that was very experimental. Heaven set was for a risk one. Obviously it's just one poll, so it must be good. But I think a lot of kids will say, is Doctor Who back on next week? Where did it go? Can we go back to fighting uh, robots, please? We've got a message uh, from the Doctor. I'm delighted and stunned uh, to discover that Heaven Sent has been voted the most popular Doctor Who story in the show's history. I'm hugely appreciative towards the Doctor Who readers who voted for it as a byproduct made an old Doctor very happy. I was enough to be the Doctor at a time where there was a kind of ambition for the show that allowed us to make an episode like Heaven Sent while staying firmly in the realms of the show's DNA. Consequently, it attracted first-rate talents to the program. We had amazing cinematography by Stuart Bidcombe, Will Oswald's uh, editing, Murray Gold's music, of course, inspired by Rich by Rich Slowly. I use it fantastic crew, but most of all, Stephen Moffat's brilliant and moving script. One of many I was lucky enough to be a part of. This was an idea that only Stephen could have come up with, and only he could write. So all that is correctly to him. Two of my points: Stephen has made a record-breaking amount of contributions to the top ten best list. Peter Capaldi on Peter Capaldi's point. Uh, so, Heaven Sent, Stephen Moffat wrote, as he did Woods on Time the Doctor Falls, as he did for Day of the Doctor, as he did for Blink, as he did for Science and Other Forest of the Dead. So, five out of the ten, top ten, were written by Stephen Moffat. Um, so, yes, uh, let's get back to the actual article itself. There's no getting away from the fact that Stephen wrote literally half of the final ten. As well as claiming the top two positions with a pair of 12th Doctor Adventures, he also charts strongly with Blake the Day of the Doctor and Science Live for the Dead. Last time, this ma- magazine conducted a survey of every single story. Um, back in 2014, uh, the 50th anniversary special narrowly beat the Weeping Angels debut as the o- overall uh, champion. A decade later, it seems that those episodes have cemented their position among the fandom's favourites. Yes, I think you can say they're lodged in there, says Stephen, clearly humbled, and those stories are older than we think they are. For 77 minutes on one particular Saturday, a long 10 years ago, the Dead Doctor was regarded as the greatest television programme ever made. Everyone was so happy. Obviously, it slipped back to a more sane appraisal now, but it's nice to see that it's still up there. The first time Doc 2 magazine looked at an all time best survey was back in 1998. On that occasion, Genesis of the Daleks was the winner. We were the piece of the experiment in 2009. The Cage and Amazonic had risen to the top, but unsurprisingly, those former champions both sit firmly inside the top five. What is it about this tales that make them so enjoyably popular? It's really interesting, isn't it, Pondo Stephen? We all knew in the school playground that Genesis of the Daleks was a cut about everything we'd seen before. But we were all going, have you seen Doc 2? It's amazing, even though there's hardly any Daleks in it. In those days, we would rate Dalek stories by having time you saw Daleks. So by that measure, Day of the Daleks, Night and Sins, Jewish Sins, Rubbish Rob, was that too many old gods had not enough Daleks. Didn't appreciate the time that it actually, it, that it's actually a really good story. Just as Daleks were just blowing us all away, it has the show's best monster in Davos, the best villain. 
So we've got another little snippet uh, interview, this time with uh, Brian Minchin. And there's a match made in heaven. Executive producer Brian Minchin reflects on the winning story. Something my job is about backing artists with a vision. And as soon as Stephen started talking to me about the idea of the intent, I loved the purity of it and the concept of it. Uh, concept of it. I loved how it was going to be challenging Stephen. I loved how it was going to challenge Stephen as a writer, Peter as an artist, Rachel as director, and the entire team. The, the idea of giving Peter a solo episode was hugely appealing. I was immediately excited by people. Sometimes think Stephen has a slightly tricksy element to his writing, but I actually think he's hugely emotional. A lot of his writing is about finding ways to explore emotion and to reflect experiences in a really fascinating way. We knew that Clara would be gone and we knew that the Doctor would be dealing with that loss and grief. And that, and so this would be a way to explore that. But if it had just been about loss, I don't think we would have done it. It's about so many things. It's about perseverance. It's about belief in yourself that you can overcome things. The bit that took me when I rewatched it was the Doctor's memory of Clara and his imagination of how she would talk to him. That helped him to win. It's easy to make something that's a bit sad, but actually it's more fun than that. Memories of the person you loved will help to make you a better person. Although the case of Anjazani has always charted highly in our polls, back in 1984 it was beaten in the annual, annual season 7 by a story that boasts some of the most thrilling Dalek action shows ever seen, Resurrection, Resurrection of the Daleks. So perhaps Caves is a perfect example of a tale that was initially clipped by a flashish showpiece story that has become more appreciated over time. Yeah, that's absolutely true, agree, Stephen. By the way, can I just say, uh, I really liked Resurrection of the Daleks. It's very well directed and it's very well done. Oddly enough, I wasn't blow that blown away by Caves when I first saw it, even though I was a massive fan of Peter Davidson's Doctor. I was blown away by it much more recently, 10 years or so ago, when I watched it again. I thought, wow, this is fantastic. It's atmospheric and amazing. I sometimes wonder if writer Robert Holmes had just uh, watched the first ever story when he was writing it. And as they're the only two stories where the Doctor is completely outpaced by people who are much dumber than him, complete Stephen, he generally gets to be the amazing conjurer. But in these two, those two, he gets completely messed up. It's very rare to put the Doctor in a situation where he looks around. There was exactly one person worth saving here, and she came up with me. And she came here with me. Uh, and again, I wonder if Robert Holmes thought the last time the Doctor changed in 1981's Agropolis, Tom Baker had to save the entire universe, so I'm going to give Peter Davison the smallest victory he could have. In some ways, that's a more heroic definition of the Doctor. As we cast our eyes down our, top, our new top ten, we find some more long-time favourites. Human Nature's Family Build came 6th in 2009, 9th in 2014, now rebounds to 7th place. Meanwhile, City of Death came 8th in 2009, 5th in 2014, and is now back to 8th. And the numbers of the Daleks seem to be gradually rising in popularity, having risen 14th in 2009, risen to 10th in 2014, and now claiming 9th place. I like to think it's personally responsible for that. I like to think I'm personally responsible for that joke too. When people watch them on series and won't watch the press queue, that obviously annoys me profoundly. So the story that I always recommend is Remember It's the Daleks, because it's terrific. It's totally very consistent with the non show, but also very different, just full of grandstanding moments. Also, people really don't know just how good Sylvester McCoy is. There was such fan negativity around at the time, and I was probably part of it too because I was a fool. But you get this new blazing doctor in a new, in a really beautifully made show. As for human nature, I was terrified of Blink going out immediately after it. So I thought that's the best thing I've ever seen. So now we've got my show which doesn't even have David Tennant in it. I also think that it's no sort of thing to say that human nature is David Tennant, David's finest hour in Doctor Who. That's his best performance, especially when you see the Doctor coming back from his other persona, which is brilliantly done. So which class story is missing for the final top, from the final time beyond uh, Steven says, I think it's a crime that the Arkham Space 975 isn't in there. He says, you could take that script and hand it to any regular cast. William Carp wants to do it, Shoot could do it, it could be Matt Smith with Ponds. I actually think it's perfect. Also, where is 2005's Rose? There was so much packed in that episode about how we're going to do Doc 2 that we now take for granted. There's a whole lot of brilliant things that Russell T. Davis did in his first year, and Rose is that impeccable restatement of Doctor, Doctor Who. It, exactly the same as it always was. Uh, but 
also completely different. I remember watching that and thinking that's a note perfect thus for a recreation of Doctor Who for a brand new audience. And then Russell does the very first Doctor Who series finale, Brad Wolf, part of the ways 2005, which also should be in there. Again, it's possible to forget that we've not, that because we've seen lots of finales now, a lot of them very good. Uh, but that's it there, invented for the first time. It's fair to say that no list of favourites can possibly hope to match views of every fan, but sure, no one can dispute the fan, the fact that it contains some damn fine Doctor Who. No wonder it lasted 60 years. So yes, uh, that was the article all about the Doctor Who magazine 60th anniversary poll with Heaven Sent uh, being the best Doctor Who story uh, from 1963 to 2022, all the way from Unearthly Child Part 1 to The Power of the Doctor. And that's actually where I'm going to end this episode. So let me know what you thought of uh, the poll. Did you agree with it? Did you, did, did you disagree with it? Did you vote? Did you not vote? Let me know in the comments below. You can also like, comment and subscribe. But that's it for the Everything Podcast, Season 2, Episode 116. Goodbye.